hope this has been so fun-filled for you so far this morning. And after all of the exciting announcements, it's time to dive a little bit deeper. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Excellent. All right, so here with the latest news on the Meta developer ecosystem and a first in-depth look at all of the exciting and new updated tools, programs, and features is Meta's Developer State of the Union. Please welcome and make some noise for Chris Pruitt. Hello, welcome to the Connect Developer State of the Union. Wow, it is awesome to be back in person with you all. Um, we got a lot to talk about today, and I want to say hello also to all the folks that are you know, dialing in from the live stream. Now, this is a session for developers. Um, it's for developers who are building for MetaQuest, uh, MetaSpark, and AI. In the next 45 minutes, you know, first I'm going to talk about the Quest ecosystem, then uh, Prabhu Parthasarathy is going to come on and talk about some of our developer tools uh, and products that we've built. Chaya Nayak will join us to speak about AI. And then Kimberly Unger is going to come and show some of the coolest stuff we've seen lately. Let's start with the Quest ecosystem. I feel like we sort of say this every year, but like the Quest just keeps getting bigger and bigger. In the Quest store now, over $2 billion has been spent on apps, games, and experiences. Uh, and that, that money is going to developers of all different shapes and sizes to allow them to grow their business. One in 12 titles on our platform has made $10 million or more in gross revenue. And we've shipped over 50 titles already. This year, we have a whole lot more coming in the holiday season. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about success with video games, right? Like, Fitness and wellness developers are finding huge success uh, because it turns out that millions of people are using VR today to help improve their well-being. Growth on App Lab has also been incredible. Um, you know, some of our largest and most accomplished studios are soft launching in lab, App Lab to get feedback about their applications or make modifications before a full store, a full store launch. Uh, Roblox, for example, soft launched in App Lab, uh, as has uh, Glassbreakers from Polyarch and uh, X8 from Thirdverse, just to name a few recent examples. All of this is about to get a lot bigger with the launch of MetaQuest 3. Now, you've heard you know, all the details already this morning. Um, Quest 3 is designed to run VR apps and games better than ever. It's got all this cool MR tech uh, you know, strapped onto it. It's got these low-profile lenses that's awesome. It's a smaller, slimmer form factor. But what does that mean for you? What does it mean for the developer community? Well, first of all, MetaQuest 3 packs a punch. It's twice the GPU power and about 30% more CPU power than Quest 2. Developers who've been working on MetaQuest 3 tell me that, like, this power allows them to significantly increase the complexity of their scenes. Um, they're able to use effects, uh, like post-processing effects, like blur and blooms that were previously prohibitively expensive. They can crank their texture resolutions way up. And you know, in addition to just sort of raw power, we've been working on ways to make it easier for developers to deliver beautiful, real-time 3D software on Quest 3. This year, we announced a feature called Dynamic Resolution, um, which makes it easy to develop for developers to maintain you know, high VR frame rates by automatically adjusting the, the resolution of the display based on GPU load. So if the GPU is saturated, we scale the display down a little bit so you maintain frame rate. But if the GPU is idle, we can scale it up and deliver the crispest image. Like application Space Warp, um, this technology is designed to make it easier for you to hit VR frame rates and deliver beautiful 3D scenes without spending all of your time uh, in, in performance optimization or having to make you know, visual quality compromises. Now, the Quest 3 display has a wider field of view and has a higher pixel density, uh, so everything on this device looks fantastic. 
Uh, and like MetaQuest Pro, it's using these low-profile uh, pancake lenses. Now, upcoming titles like Asgard's Wrath 2, Ghostbusters, and Behemoth are absolutely going to shine on this device. And existing sort of graphic showcases like Red Matter 2, they just they look phenomenal. Now, we've had a lot of talk today about mixed reality. Um, and Quest, Meta Quest 3 is a world-class mixed reality device. The pass-through videos, 10x higher resolution, and it's really just a completely different experience in full color. We've also invested a lot in new APIs uh, for scene understanding, uh, occlusion, reliable spatial anchors. And this, this technology, I mean, let's be really clear, this technology is maturing quickly. And like the early days of VR, the, the sort of early days of MR are going to be about you all, the developer community, defining the grammar for MR and showing us what it can really do. But we're really excited already because even the early stuff we've seen, the, the early stuff coming out of the developer community has been super compelling. Um, titles like Laser Dance, Piano Vision, Aspire 2, just make us super excited for the future. And it's not, it's really, it's not just mixed reality, right? It's a whole collection of technologies that we've been working on for years that are sort of coming together in this device. You know, hand tracking, for example, it's a natural fit for MR. And you know, on Quest 3, we've got high resolution trackers and a depth projector, and hand tracking is, is better than ever. Now, of course, as you know, um, developing a great title is you know, the first 90% of the work, and then there's the second 90% of the work where you actually have to promote it and market it and make it into like a viable business. And so this year we announced the existence of Oculus Publishing, which is a game publisher that actively funds and provides production support to high-end profitable games on Quest. Actually, many of the top titles that are on our platform today uh, were built with the support of Oculus Publishing, and it's a program that we plan to expand. But it's also really important that all developers have control over their own businesses. So this year, we've shipped a number of self-service tools that are designed to help developers promote, monetize, and make their apps successful. There's a, there's a ton of them. I'm just going to go through like a list here. Uh, there's A-B testing for store promotion, promotional assets and price, so you can find like the optimal fit for your, for your app in our store. Um, there's a feature called Try Before You Buy, which allows uh, customers to test out your app before they decide to make a purchase decision. And you know, that requires zero code changes from you. We now have country-specific pricing for apps and in a purchase. There's a feature called custom discount codes, which allow you to generate a code that gives a customer a discount on your app. And they're great for like, you know, giving back to your community, or running an influencer campaign, or wanting to track sort of other offline uh, marketing campaigns. We have self-service bundles, which allows you to run limited discounts on your titles as long as they've been on the store for at least 90 days. There's self-service pre-orders and coming soon pages, so you can actually get started with promotion even before your title launches, like 180 days before your title launches. And later this year, we're going to ship a feature called VR Short Links, which will allow you to track uh, an off-platform campaign all the way from click through to conversion. Now, all this work is designed to increase the growth and scale of the MetaQuest ecosystem. And I hope you can tell that we're committed to making it the best developer ecosystem in the world. Now, I talked a lot about Quest. Uh, I want to spend a little bit of time touching on MetaSpark uh, and some of the work we've done to support that. 750 million people are already interacting with experiences built in MetaSpark each month. And for this developer community, we're introducing new tools and capabilities designed to make creation easier than ever. We've added skeletal animation blending and a timeline editor to improve the process of creating seamless and realistic animations. And I, you know, MetaSpark Studio is an awesome tool, but I know that there's a bunch of you who would like to just jump straight into the code. So the MetaSpark command line interface and VS Code extension those are for you guys. 
We've also developed debugging and profiling tools to accelerate creation, iteration, testing. Uh, and there's a whole set of new templates to help you get started on projects faster. Now, these are AR projects on Facebook and Instagram that are a way for developers, both new and experienced, to monetize at scale. You can build these things and hook them up to our ad manager, and you can drive deeper experiences across reels, feed, and stories. We've got a lot more to talk about related to MetaSpark, so if you're interested, please make sure you come to our breakout sessions uh, or watch them later on demand to learn more. Now it's time for me to hand the mic over to Prabhu to talk about some of the cool tech that we've been building and what it means for you. Hello, everyone. Wow, what a day. So many announcements. I'm super excited. So Chris just spoke about the tremendous progress we have been making with the Quest ecosystem and our excitement for the possibilities with MetaQuest 3's incredible mixed reality capabilities. I'm going to break all of this a bit more about all the amazing tech we are building to make the MetaQuest ecosystem not just the best VR ecosystem for developers, but for everybody and for years to come. As the product manager for Presence Platform, my job is to bring innovative tech so you can unleash all your creativity. Our mission is to empower developers to build experiences that allow people to connect in ways that are fun, exciting, engaging, authentic, and meaningful. We are seeing some great traction with many developers already using features from Presence Platform across mixed reality, natural inputs, realistic presence, and more in all their apps. With MetaQuest 3, we expect to see this grow even more rapidly. I know you're all here to learn more about all the new developer stuff we are launching, so let's get going with the big story of the day mixed reality. Great mixed reality experiences powered by Presence Platform's AI technology allow you to seamlessly blend the virtual and the physical world in a more immersive, natural, and intuitive way. And this is exactly what we've accomplished with MetaQuest 3. Our adaptive mixed reality engine intelligently understands and interacts with objects in your physical space. And today, I'm excited to share some updates that will allow you to push the limits of all that can, you can create with this. The first thing you'll notice on the MetaQuest 3 is the brand new space setup feature. This makes it magical to get started in MR with automated room layout detection. Honestly, you just have to experience it to believe how fast and intuitive this feels. The full color pass-through is significantly improved with higher resolution, better depth perception, and tons of stylization options. The new Mesh API provides geometric representation of a user's space to make your app feel so much more realistic with fast collision and navigation. And coming soon, the Depth API will allow for occlusion of virtual objects with real-world objects and people. Now, taken together with the already available anchors and scene understanding capabilities, you have a robust MR toolset to build your next great experience. Now, those were some updates on mixed reality. Now, let's talk about inputs. We are enabling more natural and intuitive interactions on apps through a number of new features and updates. First, the big news here is that thanks to the AI powering our hand tracking technology, we've made up to 75% improvement 
in the perceived latency in our fast hand movement experiences. Now, what does that mean? You can now use hands for even the most challenging fitness experiences. And your users will have a much more natural and agile interactions. And just as a reminder, Interaction SDK is our library of very useful components that help you build delightful interactions in all your experiences. Since Connect last year, we've been chipping away at making Interaction SDK better with new and improved primitives, including improved surface detection, touch, locomotion, and support for body pose gesture detection. Now, I'm also excited today to share two new ways for you to have your users interact in these apps. First, a very popular developer request is finally here. Multimodal inputs will enable the use of hands and controllers at the same time. We are really excited about the potential implications here. You could use a controller in one hand while gesturing with the other, or directly poke buttons with your fingers while holding a controller. Second, we are launching micro gestures, giving developers the ability to do stuff like micro swipes and taps in hands-enabled experiences. And for users, a more lightweight, comfortable, and precise experience. Let's talk about controllers. MetaQuest 3 controllers come with true touch haptics. This enables a deeper sense of immersion, allowing developers to tap into people's natural sense of touch. We are introducing a slate of a state-of-the-art suite of haptics tools, Meta Haptics Studio and Meta Haptics SDK, to quickly and easily create audition, and implement high-quality HD haptics into your existing audio FX. But here's the best part. Everything you integrate with Haptics SDK is backwards and forwards compatible with Quest devices and controllers. At Meta, we believe that high-fidelity digital representations of people and their physical movements can bring a deep sense of connection. And with Movement SDK, you can achieve all that. Our inside-out body tracking technology uses sensors in the headset to track upper body movements accurately, making it really great for fitness, games, and social apps. Our new AI-based generative legs extends and simulates full body motion for a much more realistic presence. So how do we do it? We use machine learning models that are trained on large data sets of people doing real actions, like walking, running, jumping, playing ping pong. You get it. All this provides natural movements where the body keeps the center of gravity and limbs move, you know, like your real body moves. I'm really excited to see what our developers do with Movement SDK in all their apps. Now, we've talked about a lot of SDKs, but let's talk about developer tools. We want to help you push the boundaries of creativity while also making it easier and to be able to scale your applications. That's why we are investing heavily in building platform tools to make it simpler and faster for you to go from setup to build and to test. Just to quickly highlight some of these developer tools that we've been working on. Today, we are announcing Building Blocks for Unity. An easy way to start 
can combine multiple of our SDKs into your existing working project. With building blocks, it's really as simple as a drag and drop, drag and drop exercise in your editor, and you're good to go. Meta XR Simulator is our new tool for simulating Meta XR devices for faster development. With Meta XR Sim, you can simulate Meta XR devices at the API level to easily test and improve the mechanics, design, and the overall experience of your apps, all without putting on your headset. Yeah. Our Unity Project Setup tool takes your setup time from hours to mere minutes in just a few clicks. MQDH, or MetaQuest Developer Hub, is our tool for developers to build and iterate on their apps. We continue to make a lot of improvements to MQDH. Now, you can easily invite your playtesters and enable them to capture and share feedback. Now, if you're already building for MR, we have just a few more updates for you. In partnership with Unity, we recently announced AR Foundation support for our Quest devices. Now, what does that mean for you? With AR Foundation, you build your MR applications once and release them on any ecosystem of your choice, not just Metas. And we are simultaneously building and shipping many of our features on both Unity and Unreal. Your ecosystem, your engine, your choice. All the tools, all the tools and updates that I just shared are great steps. But we also know there is so much that needs to be done. We are really committed to making MetaQuest development easier and faster to help accelerate developer innovation. Now, we have curated two days of a ton of developer-focused breakout sessions and workshops on a variety of relevant topics. I encourage you all to attend these workshops and developer sessions. And when you do, please talk to us. Your feedback is what will help us continue to innovate and ultimately make you all successful on the platform. Now, a little while back, I talked about how we are weaving AI to make significant improvements to mixed reality, hand tracking, movement, and more. But that's not all that Meta is doing on AI. So to talk more about how Meta is thinking about Gen AI for developers, please welcome Chaya. Hey, everyone. From developing MetaQuest 3 to generative AI, we've been a bit busy at Meta. Why? Because we're laser focused on building world class tools and technologies built with developers in mind. Because we know that when our developers have accessible, easy to use tools for creation, the sky is the limit. We're weaving generative AI into nearly everything we do. And our vision, as you heard from Mark, Ahmed, and Angela, is to create a platform that anyone can build on. Powered by learnings from our deep research and open models, broadly accessible to everyone, and integrated into our apps and services. At Meta, we believe in an open approach and that it's the right one for development of today's AI. Especially those in the generative space where the technology is rapidly advancing. By making AI models openly available, they can benefit everyone. Opening access isn't new at Meta. We have a long history of sharing open projects like PyTorch, React Native, GraphQL, Segment Anything, FairSec, and more to empower the community. We are especially excited about how this open approach can support developers like you. In July, we had the opportunity to share Llama 2 with the world, unlocking pre-trained and fine-tuned models of varying sizes, 
And we did this with the support of a broad and diverse set of companies and people across tech, academia, and policy who believe in our open approach to today's AI. One of the biggest criticisms of generative AI is that the technology will only be owned by the largest corporations, given the really high cost to build it. And that's why we're democratizing the process, enabling all developers like you, from individual developers to large companies, to access these models and really get access to the best models available. We've been thrilled to hear the varying ways teams around the world are already applying the tech to their own work. One, you can come back tomorrow and you can learn firsthand from Geo and Shopify on how they're bringing Llama to enterprises. Researchers at UC Berkeley, my alma mater, go Bears, um, a re built a research chatbot called Koala, which is fine-tuned on Llama 13b to study the performance of lower parameter models against closed source competitors. And what they found was that the research actually suggests that models that are small enough to run locally on your own machines can be just as performant as larger models with careful fine tuning. We're already seeing developers develop these tools. In fact, there's an entire subreddit with over 50,000 members dedicated to deploying Llama locally. Some of our developers are building role-playing games. I'm really excited to try those out personally. These are great examples of the excitement building in the community around these open source tools. And in August, we're adding to the Llama family with the introduction of Code Llama. Since releasing Code Llama just one month ago on GitHub, we saw over 9,000 stars of people favoriting it. Over on Hugging Face, there's been over 100,000 downloads, and we've seen the community growing and improving our model with their own fine-tuned versions. In fact, we heard from Snowflake that fine-tuning improves the performance of Meta's Code Llama on SQL code generation. It's pretty cool. Now I want to share a little insight into what we envision for these models, especially for AR, VR developers like you. I want to share some bold ideas with images created with the EMU model that you just heard about from Mark. With Llama 2, we want businesses and developers to be able to fine-tune the pre-trained Llama 2 model for diverse cases. For instance, a digital artist could fine-tune Llama 2 to be a personalized AI that would enhance a VR art exhibit, giving every attendee a unique tour. The beauty of Llama 2 is that it's flexible and can easily run on your local infrastructure, making your imagination the limit of its utility. And imagine if you wanted to develop your own customer support agent, and you wanted that agent to represent you and your brand and its values. You could leverage Llama 2 Chat with a system prompt that teaches the model about your brand and its values, and you can quickly create a unique experience for your customers. For Llama 2 Chat, we really focused on safety alongside flexibility so that it could be used for a wide variety of chat use cases and specialized through these system prompts. And I mentioned that we really envision businesses fine-tuning Llama 2 for these types of specific use cases, and that's exactly what we did for Code Llama. By leveraging both Code Llama and Llama 2 together, you could actually build a virtual storefront with Code Llama and Llama 2 Chat, and Llama 2 Chat could actually staff that storefront for you. It's pretty awesome. Across all of our investments in the Llama family, our goal was to create models that are flexible. They can adapt to your infrastructure, security, and your privacy needs, and they also have significant investments in safety. We really hope that these models will save you time and money and allow you to focus on making your most creative ideas become a reality and really building those ideas for your customers. Another way that developers are, supporting, um, are being supported by Llama 2 is our investments in safety and responsibility. And this is really important for me because this is my role here at Meta. Um, I focus on safety and responsibility. And our goal with these investments is to really ensure that you can build both safe and helpful experiences. Building responsibly is a major priority at Meta, and we believe that an open approach promotes transparency and access. 
We know that while AI has brought huge advances to society, it also may come with risks. And we invested significant engineering effort into fine-tuning the model with learnings from more than 1,000 hours of red teaming and annotation efforts. And we really worked to ensure that we balance safety of the model with model performance. One of the exciting parts of open sourcing our models is actually that developers like you can contribute to their safety and um, can contribute to the use of these models in responsible ways. For instance, developers can continue to fine tune and report on safe behavior of these models. And as a community, we can actually leverage that feedback and make them safer. We're really looking forward to seeing how developers continue to build out the safety and integrity of these tools and really help to spur innovation and um, make these future releases under the Llama brand better. OK, let's recap. We believe that large language models and creator tools can impact people's lives. And that's why we are putting these tools directly into your hands so that you can innovate, you can build responsibly, and contribute to the community of developers just like you. We hope that these tools will augment your ability to build rather than replace it. And later today and tomorrow, we're actually going to be sharing more content with you so that you can learn more about the Llama ecosystem. So be sure to check those out. We're so excited to support you in building the future. And um, we really are excited about the future of the metaverse and beyond. But for now, to share some of the incredible work this community has already been doing, please welcome Kimberly. Hello, developers! How's everybody doing? Yep. Come on, gimme, 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 gimme! All right! I get it, I get it, I get it. We've covered a lot in the past half an hour. Everything from our robust and growing MetaQuest ecosystem to the product updates we made based directly on your feedback to our big bit bets in generative AI. And look, while we're hoping all the cool stuff that's coming your way is going to make your lives and your jobs a little bit easier going forward, it's now time we turn the spotlight on you, our developer community. You have been driving incredible innovation and growth on our platform. We're seeing wins for developers across a broad range of app categories, genres, and studio sizes, from small one-person efforts in work-from-home offices to large 100-person teams from indies exploring new mechanics in VR to deeply experienced teams building the very foundations of mixed reality. And as with any growing ecosystem, those wins can take a different shape depending on just what the title and the developer has to offer. Now, earlier this year, we introduced Oculus Publishing, one of the largest publishers of VR and MR content in the world. Developer success is our brightest north star. And it doesn't do the world any good if a developer releases a single title, explodes into digital fairy dust, and vanishes from our ecosystem. We work to support our developers to bring their best work to the store through a variety of methods and opportunities. Now, over the past three years, this line of thinking has translated into repeat successes for many developers on our platform. As an example, Shell Games continues to be one of our top developers with experience in creating both entertainment and educational titles. They're responsible for not only bringing hits like Among Us into VR, but stepping up to deliver top quality education titles like Kirkskazakt as part of their core commitment to make education in VR as engaging as it is retentive. And they've just cemented their success with one of the first broadly recognizable multi-title puzzle series in VR with I Expect You to Die 3, Cog in the Machine. Now our next repeat success story, Polyarch is taking the rich and complex world and characters that they developed for the Moss franchise, and they're taking it in a whole new direction, landing one of the first 1v1 MOBA-styled multiplayer VR titles 
with glass breakers, champions of moss. And CoatSync took their early VR success to a whole new level, going from a best-in-class third-party developer to a publisher under the name Thunderful, alongside developing their own content, like their freshly launched VR darling Islanders, They've begun supporting and investing in star teams like Clockstone, developers of LEGO Brick Tales, to bring an even broader range of experiences to the platform. Now, on top of that, they're opening up their MR support to bring out a larger catalog of business. So for those of you who are already developing with us, you've seen our platform evolve firsthand. You've witnessed the addition of new hardware, new APIs that drive an enhanced sense of presence, software updates that give you better battery life, the launch of App Lab, and all new experiments in monetization. Since the launch of the original MetaQuest, Oculus Publishing, Oculus Studios, and Horizon Worlds have been helping developers and creators drive growth and push the boundaries of what our VR technology can deliver. And now that we've opened the doors to best-in-class MR, we are seeing developers embrace this unique modality of gameplay. But the magic of this new way to play is bringing some of our earliest developers back to the platform with some fresh ideas. High-voltage software built the original Dragon Front for the Rift back when VR was still laying the foundations of what it could do for our players. And after spending some quality time on their flat screen catalog, the potential of MR has brought them back to our platform. It's fitting that one of our early true believers is working with Oculus Studios to bring a fully rebooted version of their early VR critical darling back to platform as Dragon Front Rising to help set the bar for mixed reality gaming as we kick off this new way to play. Bam is a never-seen-before MR title on the way, from the developers of one of our early hits, Space Pirate Trainer. iIllusions took the idea of multiplayer tabletop gaming and bumped it into six degrees of freedom, taking the best of video game art and brawler mechanics and mashing it up with intuitive controls and pass-through to take over your coffee table. And Breach VR brought the puzzle gem Kartoffel to our platform back in 2022, and they've been continuing to iterate against our new technology since then. Their path of exploration and discovery has given them room to expand into multiple projects on store and on Horizon Worlds. Now, at this point, I think it's an established fact that digital social is here to stay, whether you're on a flat screen or whether you're in six degrees of freedom. And as we move into a future where everyone is as connected as they want to be, developers are finding success building new ways to play together. Fully embodied social experiences run the gamut from the structured social experience you find in classic multiplayer games, all the way through to unrestricted social sandboxes where the players and users define their own reality through user-generated content. Another axiom is the developer behind the viral hit Gorilla Tag. Part of Gorilla Tag's success journey included the deliberate use of App Lab to find their community, figure out merchandising, and make a content plan. They built the team to reach those goals, to thrive on the MetaQuest store as one of the best examples of a fully embodied and highly social game. Another Axiom have built App Lab into their development schedule for their next project, and they fully believe in its use as a method of success before launch. Now, in a similar vein, prominent Japanese development powerhouse Thirdverse has launched their VR multiplayer hero shooter, X8, first on App Lab to build out their community and to dial in on exactly what their players want to see in a VR multiplayer hero shooter. Now, every developer knows that you always bring a little bit of yourself into the process. And on the Horizon Worlds front, while Aaron Sorrells would no longer be considered unemployed and is actually a six years sober recovering alcoholic, 
he retains the moniker unemployed alcoholic because it reminds us that our greatest successes often come from our most difficult challenges. When COVID-19 devastated the comedy, uh, devastated live comedy, he turned to the metaverse to find a new way to help people laugh. Now is the world creator of the Soapstone Comedy Club. He and his team operate the most liked world in Horizon Worlds and one of the most popular destinations in the metaverse. And Rec Room was formed in the early days of VR, when headsets still required expensive computers and wires to run them. They optimized, pivoted, launched on every platform and console, finding clear product market fit with the MetaQuest 2 audience. And Rec Room activates their audience with engaging IP integrations and unique custom content, such as Make It to Midnight, that bring their players together to play. Now, Roblox's creators and users have been asking to bring one of the largest platforms in the world to the MetaQuest, and they've delivered with style. Launching a beta on App Lab with an eye towards empowering their community to build games and experiences with VR in mind from the get-go. With over 50,000 worlds now VR ready, their amazing engineering team has been leaning hard on getting everything polished up so they can launch on store today. <laughs> so, with the launch of the MetaQuest 3, this amazing development community finally has the tools to build a best-in-class MR experience, and the games we are seeing come to light through are giving new depth to some classic modes of play. Now, as a recovering game developer myself, the idea of building a stealth action game that fits inside your very own home is hugely compelling, if difficult to design for. Digital Load, the team responsible for Eastspire 2, has reimagined a series of missions that are designed to take advantage of everyone's unique living spaces. And it gives a little bit of a different experience to every single player. And Soul Assembly, the team behind the hit Drop Dead Horror titles, are using mixed reality to bring the incredible zombies and monstrosities of the cabin into the real world, challenging the player to defend the ultimate home invasion. And last but not least, Hit Point is leveraging the power of MR to bring the cats from their hit mobile cat collecting, collecting game, Neko Atsume, into your very own home. Because cat watching in your digital backyard is one thing, but being able to pick them up and cuddle them in your own living room is worth the work to buy all those toys and cat treats. We are so grateful for this community of developers, building for social experiences, productivity, gaming, fitness, education, media, and more. If you're a developer of any stripe and you're not yet exploring our platforms, you're missing out on a market that just keeps getting bigger. And we invite you all to join us on the epic journey of building tomorrow's reality today. And with that, I'll let the community have the last word. Enjoy a look at some outstanding work currently being done on MetaQuest, MetaSpark, and with Gen AI, as well as a first look at some more of the exciting titles coming soon. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of Connect.